Hi, I've been asked to do the Take 10 today. I'm Phil Cannon, married to Linda Cannon, who did her Take 10 last week. We've been going to Southside Christian Fellowship for about five years now. Uh, we're involved with the setup team, stewarding, and we do the food bank. We were doing it just on a Wednesday, but currently under lockdown, we're still doing the food bank, but we are the only team doing it on a Monday and Wednesday. Um, and we're doing it down at the uh, charity shop to keep ourselves and the general public safe. We're also involved in a connect group and we do the Zoom meetings on a Monday evening. And it was after one of those um, uh, Monday a few weeks ago, we were praying, uh, basically we were praying for a miracle. And it uh, things, a couple of things came back to mind about uh, things that happened. And I thought that would be a good place to start for my Take 10 today. Now, um, I wanted to read a scripture. Um, it's in Matthew chapter 7 from verse 7 to 11 and it's headed up ask seek knock ask and it will be given to you seek and you will find and the door will be open to you for everyone who asks receives he who seeks finds and to him who knocks the door will be opened which of you, if his son asks for bread, will give him a stone? Or if he asks for a fish, will give him a snake? And you then, though you're evil, know how to give good gifts to your children. How much more will your Father in heaven give good gifts to those who ask him? I wanted to talk about the two things that were on my mind that night. Um, one of them uh, was Dexter, my niece and nephew's son, and this happened two years ago, and some of the church family were praying uh, because he was on the church prayer list. Dexter was taken suddenly into hospital by his mum and dad. Uh, he wasn't well, he had a high temperature and, uh, and basically gone listless. He had passed out and um, arrived at the hospital and uh, they uh, decided that um, a diagnosis of meningitis uh, followed by encephalitis. He was a very, very, very sick boy. Um, during the uh, ensuing time that he spent in hospital in the first sort of um, very short time, he um, stopped breathing and they struggled to get him breathing again. And um, they said to his mum and dad, look, he's very, very sick. If he survives this, which is unlikely, he's going to be quite damaged. Um, with the loss of oxygen, his brain will have sustained injury. Um, the meningitis will have caused injury too. So it's likely to have quite global problems in his life if he manages to survive this. Well, as a family, we were all got the message and we all started praying. I want to leave his story there and go on to another one, which is me. When I was 15 years of age, which was not yesterday, it was quite a few years ago. Um, I had done a cross-country run, about five miles. This is not something we did on a regular basis, but we did it every now and again. And I was fit enough, quite able enough, did this cross-country run, no real after effects, no problems, a bit achy, aches and pains um, in, the, in the muscles and one thing or another. But a couple of days later, during the night, I woke up. I was in uh, a lot of pain in my knees. 
I got up, put the light on, had a look, and my knees were really swollen. They were huge. And I was in a lot of pain. So I told my parents, GP got involved, run tests, bits and pieces. And before I knew it, I was in a and &E, in a hospital and being transferred to uh, a medical cardiac ward, a male ward. Um, I was in a, put in a bed beside two guys, one 26 year old and the other was 24, 25. Both of them had had heart attacks. I was in the middle of the two of them. I was 15 with swollen knees and thought, well, what am I doing here? I'm on a, a ward with all different people with heart conditions. I was told I had potentially rheumatic fever and I was there for observations to make sure I wasn't going into cardiac failure. Um, I was pretty worried. I had a barrage of tests while I was there. I was um, in a bed, basically not allowed up out of bed at all, ever, uh, for about two weeks while they did all these tests and eventually um, decided it was not rheumatic fever. I did not have a heart condition and that was, that was obviously brilliant. And I was uh, discharged under the care of rheumatologists. So my dad said to the rheumatologist, OK, so what, what is it? And he said, it's uh, Stills disease. So I looked puzzled and he said, um, have, you, have you heard of rheumatoid arthritis? And I said, yes, it's something that old people get. And he said, yes. Well, sometimes young people get it too, but it's different for young people. And that's why it's called Stills disease. So my dad said, what's the prognosis? What, what treatment, what can we do? And he said, well, the treatment is to stop pain and inflammation and just do exercises and keep uh, motivated and moving. The longer you do that, the better. The more you move around, the more exercise you get, the better for your joints. But gradually they're going to seize up. They're going to get worse, you're going to get more pain, more swelling, more difficult to move about. And you're going to be in a wheelchair probably by your mid-twenties. And then you eventually won't get out of the wheelchair. Um, pretty gloomy. Um, not, not the sort of news you want to get at 15 years of age. And uh, I remember after that, I was on my own, quiet, praying. So in okay, God, they said that I'm going to be in a wheelchair. This is for good. I don't want this. I want to be healed. What? What's some prognosis? What, what do you say about this? So I was asking and seeking God. Didn't know what else to do. Help. And I clearly... For the first time in my life at 15, I heard God's voice and I heard him say, I'm going to heal you. That's all he said. He didn't say how. He didn't say when. There was no other information. Just, I'm going to heal you. I had to wait 18 months. A lot of pain, a lot of trauma, uh, struggling. But I held on to that promise and I kept praying, OK, God, when, when? And I just felt that God saying, you know, I'll let you know. 18 months later, he said, today's the day. And I was healed. No pain, no problems, no wheelchair. Rheumatoid arthritis, Stills disease, gone. And I rejoiced. Now to go back to Dexter. We prayed for him and Linda and I were praying separately and Linda got a scripture, a promise from God and I heard God's voice saying, I'm going to heal him again. So not just for me, but for Dexter. And so we told my sister and we told my niece and nephew what God said and we were all praying. It wasn't immediate. It was a gradual thing that God did it. God did the miracle. Dexter's now two. He's had his one year tests. 
his two year tests, his hearing, his speech, his movement um, is all great. And uh, he's doing really, really well. A miracle. And I want to encourage you um, to seek God, to ask God, to seek God and to keep knocking. Because God wants to hear from us. And so often we get ourselves into a situation where we think, God, why would God do it for me? Why would God do it for someone else? We're, we're not special. But this scripture says, um, If you then, though you are evil, know how to good gift, give good gifts to your children, how much more? Will your Father in heaven give good gifts to those who ask him? He knows us. He knows our failures, our faults, what we do, how we say, what we think. He knows it. But he loves us. He gave his son to die for us. And he has unconditional love for us. And he wants to bless us. He wants to give good gifts to his children. So if you've not heard from God, ask. If you've not sought him, seek him. Ask, what are you doing? So ask God for what you need or what you want him to do for someone else. Seek God for what he says about it. Not what we think. What are you saying about it? And if he gives you a promise, it may be he speaks to you. It may be he gives you a word. He may give you a scripture. He may give you a dream. He may give you a vision. Whatever it is, hold on to it. Hold on to it and keep praying it in. It might be 18 months. It may be a year. I've had a promise that um, I had over 30 years ago now. I'm still holding on to that promise. I'm not giving up. Keep knocking. Keep knocking. Keep knocking. On heaven's door, God, when he promises, he will fulfill, he will do it. Seek him, ask him, keep, keep knocking and don't give up. God bless you.